Is that one? Yeah. Okay. So the sutures, uh, the one, the first one is the coronal suture, which is the top right here. This is the coronal suture. That is joined together by the um, frontal, the frontal and the parietal bone. The next suture is the sagittal suture. It's the lines located between the parietal bone and the, I believe the occipital bone. Oh no, it's the lines located between the two parietal bones. So okay, so it separates it in a symmetrical, it separates it into a symmetrical half. See, so it's separated into a half over there. And the lamboid suture is the line between the occipital and the parietal bone over here. Uh -oh. Okay, and the squamous suture is uh, the temporal bone and the parietal bone. Okay, so now to the facial bones. This is the maxilla located over here on the top of the mouth. This is the nasal bone located right here in the, between the nose. The zygomatic bone is the side of the cheek. It is formed formed by the temporal and the zygomatic bone. Oh, I'm scared, sorry. The zygomatic arch is located on the side of the cheek and is formed together by the temporal and the zygomatic uh, bone. The ethmoid is found between the eyes and the upper roof of the nose. And the vomer is also part of the nasal septum. The two bones that form the nasal septum are the ethmoid and the vomer bone. The mandible is the jaw. The, man the base of the mandible is the lower portion of the jaw. The ramus of the mandible is the entire side of the jaw. <clears throat> the mandible con condoil is the top of the jaw bone up here. And the mandibular notch is the side where the uh, mandible condyle is. There's a dip that goes into the mandible notch. And when it comes back up, it's called the coronoid process. So now we're going to go over to the vertebrae column. So there are seven cervical vertebrae columns. So back here, there, behind my neck right here is seven cervical vertebrae columns. The atlas is located in the back portion of the neck near the occipital. It um, also helps with like head nodding and the motion of the neck. That and the atlas and the axis uh, together would help form the range of the motion of the neck. <clears throat> the thoracic vertebrae are made up of 12 thoracic vertebrae. And then it also consists of the spinous process. The spinous process is the first bone located on the thoracic cavity. So you have the cervical, you have the thoracic, you have the lumbar, and you have the sacrum and the co coccyx. So the thoracic is contained of seven vertebrae. The first vertebrae you have would be the spinous process. The third one is listed as a transverse process. The intervertebral disc is found inside of the vertebrae as a cushion-like. Thing. It was demonstrated on the example as it was inside of uh, the vertebrae number eight. And the intervertebrae foramen is located on the 10th vertebrae in the thoracic cavity. The lumbar vertebrae contains five vertebrae. The sacrum has five fused together vertebrae. And the coccyx makes up of four vertebrae. The sternum, right here, between the, the ribs. The manubrium is the top of the sternum. The body is the center of the sternum. The phenoid process is the end of the sternum, down here at the end of the sternum. And the jugular notch is the very top, it's the very top of the, manu, the manubrium. The ribs contain seven true ribs and five false ribs. Um, the five false ribs are indirectly attached to the sternum. The ribs contain a head, a neck, and a tubular. So if you would see on the, uh, one of the examples, if you would just, one second, let me get the skeleton. So this would be considered the head of the rib, the very tip right here, and this is the neck holding it up. And the, the curved part is what we would call the tubular part. All right? And this concludes my video for the axial skeleton system. <laughs> Did you check it out?
Mm -hmm. You press the red button? It's still the gun.